Hey everyone, Joe here, and today I'm going to be showing the current draw of an incandescent classical test light and a modern LED test light and why you should care. I'm also going to be showing a situation of what can go wrong if you were to probe a sensitive low current wire in your car with a incandescent test light. If you watch my video on how to use a test light, I call the LED test light computer safe. And in this video, we're going to know exactly what that means. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to measure the current draw from the classical test light. Here I have my multimeter and my car's battery in my car all set up to do this. So let's hit the measurement right now. And the current draw from our classical test light that I have is around 227 milliamps. All right, let's now measure the current draw on our LED test light. For this one, we'll have to do two measurements because there's two different LEDs in there, one red and one green, which means that they'll both have their own independent measurements. For the green, I get about 18 milliamps. And for the red LED, I measure about 24 milliamps. So as you just saw, the incandescent test light draws about 10 times more current than the LED test light for either the green or the red LED. So let's see what happens if I were to poke the wrong wire with this test light. So here we have a simplified circuit of what a computer controlled circuit might look like in your car. Here we can see the car battery. We have here the chassis ground end and here the positive end. This end connects to a low current device at all times and the low current device goes through this little electronic switch that is computer controlled. Notice that the switch can only have a max rating of 200 milliamps going through it. It's kind of low, but it's not out of the ordinary for an electronic switch. When the switch does become closed, this circuit will be complete and it'll power this device. When the computer does decide to close the switch, this device will draw 100 milliamps from the battery. So let's say you're doing an installation and you're trying to find a blue wire. That blue wire will give you a chassis ground when you turn your radio on. And when the radio is off, it has no signal whatsoever. So you go to the manual and it says to go to a certain location, let's say the trunk. And when you get there, you find not one blue wire, you find two blue wires. One wire is the correct wire and the other one is the wrong wire. That wrong wire happens to have a circuit just like this. And this section right here is the wrong blue wire that you see. So you have to choose one of these wires to test. And Murphy's Law says the first one that you choose is going to be the wrong one. We take our classic test light and the clip side is connected to the positive end of the battery because remember, we're testing for the absence or the presence of a chassis ground. So the pointy side is this side, which probes the wrong blue wire. And for this circuit, we're assuming this switch is closed, which means the low current device is drawn the 100 milliamps that it needs to operate. The test light lights up and is drawing 227 milliamps which means the battery would have to need to source 327 milliamps. If we follow the current from the battery, we see it splits off through here, feeds the current to the devices it needs to feed to, and recombines at this point. So we have 327 milliamps over here as well, which goes through this electronic switch. But remember, our switch can only handle 200 milliamps, so chances are this switch got fried. If you had used an LED test light instead, it would have only drawn 18 milliamps, which means the battery would only have to source 100 plus 18, which is 118 milliamps, which means 118 milliamps would have appeared here through the switch. And since that is much less than 200 milliamps, this switch is having a pretty good day. Hopefully now you can understand why LED test lights are considered computer tolerant or computer safe. For the fact that they draw so little current, that means you have a much lower chance of blowing up sensitive electronic switches. I guess to really drive the point home, let's just blow one of them up. And to do that, I built this setup over here. Here's my load, which will draw current from the battery. Here's my transistor, which will act as my electronic switch. And here's a meter to measure how much current is going through this. And these two alligator clips here will connect to my car battery. And here it is on top of the engine right inside my car. There's the battery. There's the positive end connected to the setup. 
here's my negative end right here and if I connect this to the battery right here we can see that it draws about 1.1 amps and if you look at it it's not damaged at all and it's functioning fine okay let's use the LED test light first there's green for ground and if you look there's really no change in the current and he seems to be doing fine and let's take our classic test light probe that same spot there it is lit up we have about 1.3 amps let's see how our little switch is doing and there it is starting to smoke let's uh, take a look at the current real quick and it's dropped down at 0.55 because this guy malfunctioned rest in peace little guy so fun fact before this one being tested I did three others and in total two smoked and two didn't but in the end they all were damaged and couldn't be used as an electronic switch anymore this is important because just because you don't see smoke doesn't mean it's not damaged rest in peace guys thank you so much for watching this video I hope you learned something about test lights their current draw and the impact on your car's electrical system if this video helped you at all consider giving it a like also, consider subscribing to my channel where I try to give a video once a week on very similar topics. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below.